a flight going from one Thai island to another Thai island. Could this be the happiest little flight in Asia? Find out. Coming up. Our day starts off at the small but mighty Phuket International Airport, at the domestic terminal of course. Remember, bags are scanned when entering the terminal and they scrutinize every power bank, so be prepared. Today, we're flying with Bangkok Airways on PG250, across this narrow stretch of Thai real estate in the far south of the country. Essentially, we're flying from the Andaman Sea to the Gulf of Thailand. Nothing complicated about today's routing, which brought us up to a maximum altitude of 13,000 feet for this 40-minute flight to Koh Samui International Airport. Check-in was a breeze, and then the domestic side of the terminal is fairly unremarkable, but there are a variety of small shops and food stalls available for anything you might need on your way to Samui. There are also a wide variety of plane spotting opportunities. A few minutes later, I unfortunately found myself in the Bangkok Airways lounge. All Bangkok Airways passengers are entitled to enter the lounge, but here's what happened. I walked up to the front desk and handed my boarding pass. As I did this, I saw how tiny the room was, but leaving straight away would be really awkward. So I got a bit of Nescafe, sat down for around 60 seconds, then left and went to the much more pleasant Coral Lounge. Considering the restrictions at the time, there was a decent amount of food and drink available and great views to go along with it. You'll notice many far and wide body planes here as well. Pre-pandemic, over 18 million passengers were passing through each year. All of the Bangkok Airways gates were downstairs and all were bus gates. Its first scheduled flight starting in 1986 Bangkok Airways has branded itself Asia's boutique airline and was Thailand's first privately owned airline. They also have a habit of building airports. First, there was the one that we're going to today in Koh Samui in 1989, then in Sukhothai province in 1996, and finally in Trap province in 2003. They operate the flight between Phuket and Samui two to three times per day currently. And while this flight was pretty reasonable, Make sure to book far in advance if you want to travel between Samoy and Bangkok. They're the only airline that flies that route, and boy oh boy do they make bank on it. Soon, we pulled up to this 6-year-old ATR 72600 series, where boarding was orderly through the rear door. Bangkok Airways has a total of 35 aircraft, 13 ATRs, 13 Airbus A319s, and 9 Airbus A320s. All of their cabins feature an all-economy configuration and pretty tight seat pitch, though they rarely fly further than a couple of hours, so it's sufficient. The cabin was clean and very well kept, and we were off on our taxi to Phuket's runway 09, taking off to the east. While it's not quite a triple seven, I do always enjoy a good turboprop spool up.
Flying across the northern part of Phuket, I had a nice little surprise to see Naka Island one last time. If you haven't seen it already, check out my review of that incredible resort. Our flight across the mainland was super short, and soon enough, we were over the stunning Gulf of Thailand, lining up for the 2100 meter long runway 35. Before the pandemic, this airport was handling just over 1.2 million passengers a year, all of them flown in by Bangkok Airways. As we cross over southern Chuang Beach, we can also see one of my other favorite resorts, Sala Chuang, also worth a look in Samui. This is, as you can imagine, a small airport and reminded me a whole lot of Kailua Kona Airport on the big island of Hawaii before it had a lot of direct service to the mainland. As we deplaned, we were given a small snack bag with a surprisingly tasty sausage roll and muffin before we got on these funny little buses to take us to the arrivals area. It was a picture-perfect day here in Samui. Note that proof of vaccination is required to fly on domestic flights in Thailand, and masks are not allowed to be taken off for any reason on board. That's why the goodie bag is given after landing. A few moments later, we were at arrivals where we had to go through the Suratani province health check. All passengers arriving in Samui are required to fill out a Samui-specific health declaration before landing. The check-in agents will give you the QR code. When you land, the staff will scan your generated QR code. The bags came quickly and otherwise arrival was pretty unremarkable in a good way. Take care though. This airport famously has very limited taxi service. It would be wise to prearrange transport with your hotel. And now, on to that flip flop score. Their website is super easy to navigate and payments are processed easily at a 9. Check in and boarding were both quick and orderly with full marks. The seats and cabin are not the most comfortable in the world, even for a budget carrier, but for a quick flight, they're fine. Cleanliness, service, and that little goodie bag got nines across the board, and add-on value and punctuality both got a 10 as we pushed back early and seat selection and checked-in baggage were both included in the fare. Overall, a great 89 out of 100. Would I have a problem flying them again? No. In fact, I already have. I hope you enjoyed this review, and like the video, and subscribe for two new flight or hotel reviews every week. See you soon.